Hello. For those of you that did, did not get the opportunity to watch my two minute or less introductory video at the start of school, my name is Michelle Simons and I have your child this year in honors geometry. So this is a presentation that I typically do at open house, but this year I will not be doing a presentation. It will simply just be a meet and greet. Uh, as each parent will have the opportunity to walk through their student schedule and spend five minutes with their teacher. These are the units of study this year in geometry. We are currently in this Essentials of Geometry unit. Uh, we will be finishing up this next week with unit up number two being parallel and perpendicular lines, triangles, right triangles and trig, uh, quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals is usually the last unit of semester one, leading semester two with circles, solid geometry, similarity, transformational geometry, and then Regents Review, as the students do have a Regents exam at the end of this class. Materials for the course. Uh, this was all in the course expectation sheet that did go home and was signed. So this is repeated information. At this point, compasses, I am out of compasses. I do not have any more to purchase, but this is the Circle Master Compass, a ruler, graphing calculator, highlighters, colored pens, and their Chromebook. So each student is given or provided from me their semester one workbook, it's bound and printed, the notebook. And they'll be getting the same for semester two. So all their notes are in one book and then all of the warm ups, classwork and homework. So any practice is in a separate book. For the class, there is a Google Classroom. So my block three has one Google Classroom and that's separate from block one. This is the screenshot of the stream part of Google Classroom. So there is a meet link. If ever the student is absent, or if they have to quarantine, they can attend class. They just need to let me know and I'll hold a Google Meet. Okay, so all of the announcements notifications, and anytime I post something, it's also put in their stream section. Materials are all under the classwork section. So I always post an agenda that has what we're doing that day in class, and I'll show you a sample agenda. The notes, if there is a video, so this must have been a quiz day, as I always do a video on the day of the quiz so that students have the entire block if they need it. Uh, so there's no anxiety, no pressure to work at a certain pace. And then I always post my answer keys. For the lessons, I have pretty much all of my lessons recorded for every unit that I've taught. Just over the years, I have taught uh, or recorded my lessons. And if I've changed something, so there are a couple that I realized I did tweak minor things that I made note that I need to re-record. Um, but for the most part, if they need to watch a, watch a lesson or re-watch a lesson, they can go to my YouTube page. So they can bookmark it, they can subscribe, or just click on a link from class from a quiz day, and then that'll take them right to my page, and they can look at the playlist for the current unit that we're on. Consistent class structure. So every day we start with a warm-up. The warm-up is always a review of previously covered material. So I do touch upon concepts more than once and throughout the unit. I answer homework questions. So I do expect them to use my key only as a feedback tool. So they should be doing their homework assignments first, not question by question, page by page. They do the whole thing, noting which ones they couldn't do for me, and then checking it and noting which ones they got wrong for me so that I can have some sort of feedback if they're missing questions, then that means they need to come see me after school or get some help from me, a friend, a math homework couple, we'll talk more about that. Then we do the notes and then practice, and then they have their homework practice. 
this is a sample agenda from Wednesday, uh, the 22nd of September. So you can see we answer questions, grade, and then hand in the homework. So this year, I'm working with another teacher for 11R. This is my first year teaching Algebra 2. And what she does is she has the students self-assess and then collects them. And I've never done that before. I used to just grade their homeworks, but I thought it was good, especially since I give them the answer key. So I want them to self-assess their performance. So out of five points, they put them put their score on the top before they hand it in to me. And sometimes I'll overwrite it, but there I'll also too, if everything looks perfect, but they gave themselves a four, that says to me that they did miss some things or they weren't understanding some things, and then they may have fixed it in using the answer key. The warm up, the page numbers are noted. And while they're working on the warm up, that gives me some time to, you know, take attendance and meet with or talk with some kids one on one about something or spend some more time in going over the homework. And those that didn't have any questions can be practicing some more. And then we do the notes. Okay, page numbers given, classwork practice, and then if time, start the homework. Grading. So students are graded on assessments and all says assessments. So even a homework assignment is some sort of assessment or way to assess for students to assess their own learning. So homework assignments, quizzes, that's all in the formative assessment category. And in addition to homeworks and quizzes, it can be a classwork, a warm up, anything that I collect to grade. Summative assessments, so that's the end of the unit test. And the quarterly assessments, those are tests for each marking period. Now, students on the quarterly assessment can use their vocab cards. So I'll be looking at their vocab cards when they take their first unit exam to see how they're doing. And whatever they put on a card can be a formula, a definition. Uh, they can use those cards on the quarterly assessment. Oh, and what I did not mention on that slide is that, of course, they have their June Regents exam, and that does not, as you know from Algebra 1, impact their overall course grade. If your child's struggling, first thing I want you to do is check their homework. If I'm looking at my grade book and there's fives all the way across and their homeworks have been perfect, but then they're not doing well in their quizzes, that tells me they're relying too much on the answer. Oh my gosh, there's the answers here. Um, I can just, you know, write it down or use that too much as a crutch. And they're not seeking help on the ones they're getting wrong. They're just utilizing that key. So if you could help them use that as a tool uh, not to do their homework. I told them, you know, in these first five weeks, I wasn't really going to be checking them to see how closely it resembles my answer key. And it's pretty clear to tell because I write more than you need to as I use those as a reteaching tool. So, it, this, for instance, they answer in the same spot. Bottom line, it's really easy to tell, and I'm going to start. I told them uh, giving them zeros if they're just copying my homework assignments. So, if they're not doing well in the assessments, their homeworks are all fours or fives, then that's where we have a huge disconnect, and it's telling me that they're relying too much on their homework assignments because they're not answering, they're probably not asking questions in class, and they're not seeking help. Okay, so once we get that strained around, then I would encourage them to always ask questions and seek help in class, seek help after school, uh, seek help during math help. Now, I do have over 120 students this year. The two class sizes are also really large. Block one has 27 students and block one 25. So it is really hard for me to go around and give some of them the one-on-one -on -one attention they need. And even after school, um, it's really busy for math in our math classrooms, so it's really hard for me to give them some of them the one-on-one -on -one attention they need, each one of them rather. So it's always best, if possible, to get help during the school day. So if they can go to homework help, great. And if not, I would like to move their schedule around so they have the same teachers for the classes, but move it around so that they have the option of going to homework help. It's odd days block one and four, and then even days, blocks one and three. So I might have even had that incorrect in my first message home. They can always watch the lessons again on my YouTube page and work in study groups. So if they're talking, right, discussing the math with each other, then they're learning. So 
So if they're not working in groups or doing their homework together, each other's houses, you know, getting together to study, have some pizza, have some snacks, and study for their math test or quiz, then they should be doing so. And they can do it in the library, and they can do it at their houses. They can even do it over FaceTime or Google Meet. And then if we need to, we can also set up a tutor. We do have some math teachers in the department that tutor, and we also have some students within the building that might be interested in tutoring. So ways to improve their grade. So we've had two quizzes so far, and I will be uploading or entering the second round of quiz scores into school tool. For unit one only, I'm going to allow them do, to do corrections to earn up to a 65. That's only if they fail. I also, to allow them, instead of doing corrections on a quiz, I still have them correct and we go over it, but that gives them a brand new set of questions. And I call these questions the extra credit questions. So they can get up to 15 points back on one quiz or two quizzes. It just gets added back into that category. That comes at the end of every unit. So I don't want to give them or have them, I do want them to correct it right away, but I don't want to give them those new questions until possibly they have mastered it. So they can continue to practice, uh, and at the end of the unit, I'll give that assignment out, and then they can do it and show me that they have indeed learned the concept and have uh, shown mastery. And then they could earn class participation points. So I feel it's best, too, for students to hear another student explain how to do a problem or have someone else in front of the classroom besides myself. So I will have students come up to the board to go over a question for class participation points. So we all, we have a couple already that have earned some points. So that's also another way to add points to that quiz category. Things you can do at home. Uh, encourage, encourage your child to do the homework the night it's assigned. So everything's fresh. You know, we had class that day. They took their notes. We did some practice. Let's do some more practice. If they save a few for the next day, that's fine. But don't let them procrastinate and do it the night before they have class or even the study hall before my class, okay? So have them do it while it's fresh in the day that they have class. And that should be for all their classes. So maybe they're doing math, English, and science on one day, and then social studies um, and electives and whatever else they're taking the next day. Help to create that study schedule and environment. So one of the things I'm finding too, and I ask my kids, how many of you are studying? Not many are studying. Um, they have forgotten, right, in this time over the pandemic, how to study. So it's gonna take some time to get back in the routine and be responsible for doing your own work, for not using a resource, for having to have memorized, and we've been talking about different strategies and how to help them do that and, you know, doing brain dumps on the top of a quiz before they take it. But we need, together, we need to help them improve their study skills. So creating a nice, quiet environment at home where their cell phone's away, the TV's off, uh, maybe some light music playing, but help create that environment and encourage a, a routine. Help them use the answer keys as a tool and not to just copy my work. That, and as I tell them, it does nothing. You're not helping yourself if you're just copying because you're not learning it. So help them use that answer key as a tool. Encourage them to seek help, um, to form their study groups, um, to make sure that they're using some sort of tool to keep track of their assignments. So I do post daily agendas, but I did tell them, for instance, on the last quiz, what days the quiz was on, and many of them had forgotten or didn't write down. Um, are they, you know, noting when they have assessments on their, in their agenda, on a calendar, on their phones? So it shouldn't be a surprise when they walk in when they have a quiz or a test because they're told. And then last, keep lines of communication open. So if they know that we're working together to support them and so that they can best learn and do their best in the class, then that's going to be better for them. I thought I would just finish with especially if you're not coming in the building, this is my classroom. So this is uh, a glance if you're right at, standing right at the doorway. So we have some materials up front for them to utilize. I have mints up here so they can grab a mint whenever they like, tissues. And then here is a look um, from the back corner to the front door. 
So we also have some more materials here, right here by the door, some hand sanitizer, some paper towels. There's the board. Uh, I teach from here using the Elmo because I like to look at them while I'm teaching and not have my back towards them. So we're more conversing and I can see their facial expressions as I'm teaching them. And I know if I need to slow down um, or add more examples. And that's it. So I just want to end with, I'll do whatever I can to help your child be successful this year. And I hope that we can work together uh, to best support them. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out through Parent Square. And I look forward to having a good year. Thanks. Bye-bye.